Good morning, good morning, good morning. And it's a lovely, lovely morning. The uh, days are getting longer again, which you wouldn't expect in February, would you? Early February. Ooh. We've had a bit of a shocking rain and hail storm in the southeast, but no snow. It's been snow in other parts of the country, but not down here in the the warmest, one of the warmest parts of the country. I suppose Cornwall might be a bit warmer, but certainly Kent is uh, far enough south and far enough away from the uh, the weather that comes in from the west to um, miss the most shocking aspects of it. So I'm on my way to work again. It's a Monday morning. I'm actually on time. <clears throat> uh, funnily enough, by uh, I've worked that out by getting up a bit later. I've decided that uh, I'll set my uh, alarm too early. I was getting up at five to seven, which was, and then because it was too early, I was just sort of staying in bed. And then once you make the decision to stay in bed, then you're in trouble, aren't you? But now I've, I've put my clock to uh, 7.25, which means then I only have to leave at quarter past eight. So. That's plenty of time to get up and have a shower, have some breakfast and uh, find everything. I had a bit of a paradox over the weekend. Two very strange things happened. I'll tell you what they were. And you can see if you can figure out the explanation. There's a perfectly logical explanation. <laughs> In both cases, the first one was that my wife, who was checking my gown to see if it needed washing, found a pair of her knickers in my briefcase. This is a, a clean washed pair of knickers folded up in her in my briefcase. I had no idea where they'd come from, how they'd got there. I just, and it's a measure of the fact that we've been married for over 30 years, that she just mentioned it and we both looked at each other and went, hmm, like, <laughs> Normally if your wife finds knickers in your briefcase you're in trouble aren't you? But not when you've been married 30 years. You're just like, oh that's interesting. <laughs> but it was a bit of an intellectual... Slowly we deciphered out how they got there. Slowly, but it was quite good. It was a good little puzzle, you know. And then the other thing was... Um, outside our house, because our letterbox is quite small, we've got one of these metal boxes, you know, where the postman puts the post in. And also the newspapers and stuff like that, it's just more convenient. And um, my wife went out the other day to check the post, and in it, it was in the box, was an empty five litre plastic container that used to have uh, concentrated screen wash in it. You know, one of those big five litre plastic things. Completely filled the box. There's no space for no post news, newspapers or anything. Just fill up, fill up <laughs> with this empty plastic screen wash container. So <clears throat> this is today's quiz, and uh, you're not going to win a bitcoin if you get it right. But I'll give kudos to whoever does. If you guess either, or even if you get close to <laughs> the reason why either of these two things happen. My wife had a very weird weekend. First the knickers in the bag and then the screen wash bottle in the uh, in the post box. So, <clears throat> okay, there we are. That's your challenge for uh, the next 24, 48 hours or whatever. So, I'm looking forward to this week. It's gonna be a tricky week. I've got, I'm not gonna talk about work much at the moment because I've got a few things going on that I can't take a chance that they're gonna get telegraphed in this in this video so I promise I will tell you about them in hindsight but um, they are the sort of things that are quite delicate you know they're sort of commercially quite sensitive and uh, you can never be too sure who's going to be watching these videos because although they're they're unlisted they're not private you know I mean you can anyone who's got the link can view them so, I, you know, I have no control over who, who sees these. The GDC can see these for all I know. The Prime Minister could uh, wake up every morning and, uh, and stick on YouTube to see if the old angry dentist has done another video. I don't know, honestly. So, 
I can't talk about anything that uh, would be um, ad adverse, you know, if it came out in the public domain before it should. So I do apologise for that, but I, you know, as you know, I probably, as you probably know, I do sort of discuss everything in hindsight as soon as I can. So, and then you've got, I mean, there is this type of person who's sort of uh, what I call a uh, nil sum type of individual where uh, they sort of got this attitude that there's only a certain amount of <coughs> resources in the world, only a certain amount of coal, certain amount of gas, certain amount of luck, certain amount of money, certain amount of jobs, and that for them to get more, you know, which is obviously what we're all competing for, aren't we, on a primeval evolutionary point of view, we're competing for pass on our genes and our resources. Um, <clears throat> they take this attitude that for someone, for them to have more, someone has to have less. Yeah? Now, I don't subscribe to this theory. I, personally, I'm more of a, what I call a synergistic, I have a synergistic outlook, which is that you're, um, you know, two of you together can do the work of three people. Um, and I believe that I've seen this, you know, so I know this is true, but the nil some people, that for some reason they don't believe this, they're not very good at uh, team playing and they are, um, they honestly believe that the more people they can make sink, the more likely it is that they'll swim. So, <laughs> so you know, there'll be someone with access to the Angry Dentist videos who's looking to send them to anyone, anyone who might, you know, cause me some trouble. Um, so I'm not going to give them a chance. So anyway, where was I? I was talking about Peter Schiff, funnily enough, and this is a sort of, in a way, it's a sort of an addendum to the Schiff podcast. Now if you're not, as I say, if you're not interested in the economy and uh, uh, you know, the, the sort of the economics of dentistry, then and you're just, uh, if you're one of those dentists that will go, goes to a, like a CPD meeting on endo and then goes back to the practice and starts combing the BDJ for any more CPD meetings on endo, then this is not for you. But Schiff, I said, was right on, on one thing, which is the macroeconomic policy, you know, the, the, the maths of the tremendous, tremendous fiscal problems that the Americans have got themselves into. And, and the Chinese, you know, I mean, let's not forget, I mean, the Americans are not alone in this, but they are, you know, perhaps we've got a bigger stake in the health of the American economy than we have of the Chinese one. And, uh, but he's, he does blether on about Bitcoin and he, you know, he's not, for someone who's a big massive fan of gold as a, a form of money, um, you'd think that he would be a big fan of Bitcoin. Bitcoin has all the attributes of, of Nash's perfect money, ideal money, but uh, he's, uh, Schiff is convinced that Bitcoin has no intrinsic value, that its real value is zero and that it's, you know, the the only reason people buy it is because they're speculating, which means they're looking for a, a greater fool to sell it to. And then eventually when all the furore dies down, it's going to, you know, it'll go back to nothing, which is where it started. And this arises, <clears throat> this is an Austrian school um, idea. And the Austrian school is, um, was named after a bunch of Austrian economists. And it's a pejorative term, it's, it's an insult. When you say someone's the Austrian school, uh, sort of a couple of hundred years ago, it meant he was a crackpot. He adheres to the crackpot theories of the Austrians who were not way out of the mainstream. And what the Austrians advocated was sound money. In other words, money that was, that could be relied upon, that didn't lose its purchasing power. And they said that if a money can't be relied on and does lose its purchasing power, then its, its value is a signalling mechanism 
becomes irretrievably undermined. So, so what is money as a signalling mechanism? Well, basically, when I bought this car, it had a price associated with it, and the price told me something. It told me what the person who was selling the car wanted, and it also told me, therefore, roughly what how much effort had gone into making the car. You know, the reason why a car costs you five thousand, ten thousand pounds, and not five pounds or ten pounds is because the price signals the effort involved. No one's going to part for a, five, a car that's cost £5,000 to make for £5. And so the fact that they won't means that the price is a very accurate signal to the market as to the work involved. And you're not, you mustn't interfere with this signalling mechanism because otherwise two things happen. Things that are valuable get sold for less than the cost of making them and so the people who make them then give up stop making them and uh, businesses which are unprofitable are lent money because the risk is uh, mis misinterpreted so so for example if um, let's say you're going to set up a dental surgery and it's a risky business, let's say. It's a new, new uh, startup or something. And there's a degree of risk involved. And so the person who's uh, lending the dental surgery their money to start up would expect a higher return because they're adopting a greater level of risk. What you're doing is you're paying through the interest, you're paying them for adopting the risk that, that you might default on the loan. Now, if money is incredibly cheap, which it is at the moment, um, what that means is, I mean, an artificially cheap. So, in other words, the, the, the rates are not set by the market, the rates are dictated by the Bank of England, by the Federal Reserve. Then what happens is that risky enterprises who should be borrowing at 6% are able to borrow at 2% or 3%. And so as a result, a lot of loss-making businesses are able to start up. Businesses that the market would normally say no, no to because uh, there's no reasonable prospect of them surviving or making a profit. So, Austrian school, sound money. They believe that the money, not, not only do they believe that the money has to have intrinsic value, but that it has to have grown out of something that had intrinsic value. So they're saying that uh, you know, the paper money is, has no intrinsic value other than the government's promise to accept it for tax revenue. Um, and the, um, whereas gold does have intrinsic value because it has in industrial and commercial uses as jewellery. So, personally, <laughs> this is called Mises' regression theorem, and I don't, I don't agree with it. <laughs> I think that you can invent a pure money out of nothing that has no intrinsic value. I think that its only value is, its value arises from the fact that it's useful and it's scarce. And it has to be both. I mean, it's no use having something that's scarce, but which has no use at all. Um, or having something that's extremely useful, but is, is plentiful. You know, it's pretty well, you can find it anywhere. That, that's gonna have no, it's not, it won't have no value, because it will still be valuable because it's useful, but it won't have any, nobody will pay anything for it. Nobody will exchange anything for it because they can just go and pick it up off the ground. So, so that's where Schiff goes wrong about uh, Bitcoin. And also, he uh, completely discounts network effect. He says that, well, you know, there'll be another Bitcoin around the corner, Bitcoin 2.0. There are plenty of bit other currencies that do what Bitcoin does. They do, they do it better, they do it uh, more quickly, they do it more cheaply, etc. And, uh, uh, and uh, the, the answer to that, obviously, is that um, there are an infinite number of Facebooks, you know, there are an infinite number of internets, there are an infinite number of telephone systems. But you can't discount the network effect. Uh, you can't, uh, you know, you can't just start your, your own internet. You just can't start a new internet and say, look guys, my internet is better. It's easy actually to start a better internet. There are plenty of people that could write the internet better than what it has been written at the moment. But they don't bother because nobody wants to go on their internet. You want to be on the internet that everybody else is on. 
and so that is so the same with Bitcoin you know you don't want uh, uh, you don't want uh, somebody else's Bitcoin you want the Bitcoin that everyone else is using and that's called network effect and it's very powerful and that's why uh, you know uh, Facebook has grown to be so big because everybody wanted to be on Facebook because everybody else was on Facebook so there's shifts wrong on that as well but he's good on the American economy if you're into uh, economics and uh, at a macro level then I, I really recommend Schiff but uh, just don't listen to a word that he has to say on Bitcoin alright I'll uh, talk to you tomorrow bye